Hi, it's Norm Magnuson reading a satirical piece I wrote about self-censorship. It's entitled Whale Hater. I put a ceasefire now sign in my front yard and shortly thereafter a friend said, don't you care about the hostages? Of course I do, I replied, but it got me wondering about this strange and confusing conflation. Why would a sign against war and aggression in one place be interpreted as disregard for human lives and suffering in a different place? It got me wondering, and then, in the murky, creative nether world of my wondering, an imagined different friend, Wonder, wandered up and looked at that same ceasefire sign, now ensconced in the front yard of my imagination, and asked, Don't you care at all about the environment? I was thrown a bit off balance and was trying to regain some semblance of imaginary composure when that same different friend continued. The earth is warming up. Whole ecosystems are disappearing. Species are becoming extinct. Millions of humans are dying each year because of polluted air. Don't you care about any of that? He nodded in the general direction of my ceasefire now sign as if to give proof that I did not care about any of that. Well, I was speechless and my jaw was still flopping around on the floor of my mind when another, less gentle imaginary friend chimed in. Whale hater! Slammed the squeaky door to my cerebral cortex and left before I even had a chance to proffer my hypothetical rebuttal. Well, the door slam was still reverberating through the great-ish halls of my gray matter when another friend, more of an acquaintance really, kicked the sign and aggressively accused me of living in a fantasy land where income inequality and the nonstop redistribution of wealth from the working class to the ruling class somehow isn't the biggest existential threat to life on this planet today, and characterized me as a one-note Nelly for not presumably covering more topics and the tiny speck of real estate that the little lawn sign offered. Well, I don't mind telling you, the whole experience left me wanting to crawl out of that particular brightly lighted section of my mind and into the comfy chair, cozy couch, mood lighting section and listen to some Eric Satie or certain groovy funkadelic songs whilst sipping a soothing beverage. So I started toddling off in that increasingly alluring direction. When out of nowhere, a frenemy, known to be particularly adept at stirring up shit, popped up, starting, starting in, as he often did, with an innocent enough sounding question. So, ceasefire now? He asked. Um, yeah, I stuttered. And what followed was the longest most seemingly well-informed argument in favor of war and killing and the history of violence that I'd ever heard. Well, since hearing a nearly identical argument proffered in support of a different batch of killing just a week earlier. <clears throat> Thank you for your time, I muttered, trying to be as polite and non-committal as possible in this imagined backwater of my consciousness. And then I quick shuffled off again in the direction of mental comfort. As I did, I heard him spit in my general direction whilst quiet yelling, racist. I wandered around in my mind a little uncomfortably after that, kind of lost. I was a little mad, a little depressed, and a little just kind of agitated, ill at ease. I wanted to find my safe place again, where things make sense and feel right, at least to me. I'm still trying to get back there. And I'm still confused by everything that happened, both in my mind and in the real world. But I will tell you this. I took that sign down right away. And I won't be foolish enough to be expressing my opinions about the sanctity of human life again anytime soon. I mean, all I have really is my reputation. I need to protect that at all costs.